Uh, wouldn't you know it? Nobody lives here. Oh, we've just got to get him. Mike, he's the only one in town. Look, folks, you got me parked on the wrong side of the street. Can we come back tomorrow morning when the joint's open? Oh, of course not. This is a treasure hunt. So haven't you ever been on a treasure hunt, mister? All my life. But it had nothing to do with dogs and pet shop windows. Well, he makes light of a very serious matter, doesn't he? Why, do you know at this very moment eight couples are roaming the streets of New York, begging, borrowing, and even stealing various objects? It's a party. Look, you see this balloon? I was taken from a bubble dancer in the Palais Royal. Now, don't go away. You see that mask? It was worn by the catch in the last World Series. And that, my friend, is an old-fashioned bed warmer. Ain't it a beaut? And this is an illustration of an old-fashioned song. A bird in a gilded cage. Isn't that devastating? Oh, lady, that ties me in knots. And now all we need is that Siberian police dog. And, and we win. Yeah? What? Huh? What do you win? Why, uh, we win. We take him back to the party and, uh, we win. I guess I'm crazy. Pardon me. Oh, Mike, you're wonderful. Hey, put that rock down. Shall we go? Yes. Why are you leaving here? What's the matter? I forgot to leave a guard. Come on, let's get out of here. Come on, man. Yeah, boy. Come on, get in here. Out of boy. Get in. Out of boy. Back to the party, pal. And collect the prize. Not only was the window smashed, Mr. Vance, but my pets ran away. Are you sure it was my son? Yes, sir. He left his card in the door. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Uh, Abernathy. You make out a bill for the damages, and Mr. Winton here will send you a check. Thank you, Mr. Vance. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Good day, Mr. Abernathy. Good day, sir. Good day. I'll see you downtown, Winton. But we ought to decide something about the mine. I said I'd see you downtown. One o'clock in the afternoon, and what are you doing? I was just thinking, if I live to three, I'll live forever. Now, isn't that nice? Michael Vance, the playboy, the royster, the gay blade. Now, society columnists ought to get a look at you now. Oh, go away, Pop. Didn't you ever feel like this? Sure I did. But I was up at 6.30 in the morning fighting it off, breathing in the fresh air. What's I... this I hear about you stealing the dog? Who, me? Yes, you. A man named Abernathy was here, and he... What's that? What? That's... Oh, that's Webster. What's the gardener doing up here? Oh, Webster! Oh, I don't know, Pop. Say, Webster, come out of there. So, you don't know anything about a dog, huh? Oh, I'm sorry, Pop. was a little going-away party. Sit down, you. What? Not you, Dad. I was talking to the dog. Oh. You see, we figured a little celebration was in order. Since I was to be a son of Todd. Oh, yes, of course, of course. Just such a world-shaking event couldn't go unnoticed. Well, young man, your celebrations are over. You're heading out of here tonight for Radium City. Say, I want to talk to you about that. Well, we're all through talking. I've got a bull by the tail in this Radium deal, and you've got to get to work. What do I know about Radium? Oh, what does anybody know about it? I thought you dug the stuff up like you do gold. Then I find out that you mine something called pitch blend, and, and you'll get a gram of radium out of a ton of it. Well, what do you want me to do about it? Well, you're supposed to be a mining engineer. I want you to go up there and find out what it's all about. Of course, I think we'd save money by closing down. But however, that's up to you. What happened? The manager quit? No. Why? I just have a hunch that you and this fellow Winton talked this thing over, and I'm going to take a trip. Oh, nothing of the kind. Winton has been after me to close down. Now, sending you up there was entirely my idea. All right, Pop, I'll check my plane and be out of here tomorrow at 12 o'clock. Now, you'll do nothing of the kind. You're just looking for an excuse to spend another night in New York. 
Hey, now, here are your train tickets to Seattle. You go by boat from there to St. Pierre. Quentin has arranged with the company plane to meet you and take you to the mine. After that, you're on your own. Pop, I've got a lot of obligations. I can't leave my friends. Oh, there's none of them so serious that I can't take care of them for you. Is there anything special? Yeah, Pop. Well, what? Tell my friends that the condemned ate a haughty breakfast. Vance. This is Father Devlin. How Hello, Father. How are you, sir? I didn't think you'd mind another passenger. You see, Father Devlin is doctor, nurse, and priest of this whole North Country. Well, it's a pleasure. Are you going to be with us long, Mr. Vance? Oh, just long enough to look the mine over, Father. Well, this boy looks as if he'd be at home up here, doesn't he? Yes, I'm afraid he's going to be all right. <laughs> hey, this is a trim little job you have here. Yes, it belongs to the mine. We're just waiting for Mr. Carson. Carson? Well, the mine superintendent. Oh. He's over at the Mounted Police Office now. Oh, yes. Hello? Just a minute. There's New York, Mr. Carson. Oh, thank you. Hello, J.O.? This is Carson. Young Vance arrived okay. Yeah, we're leaving for the mine in a few minutes. Good. Good. The old man crossed me up by sending the boy, but I don't think you'll have much trouble getting rid of him. He didn't want to leave and he'll be anxious to get back. Well, I'll let you know what happens. So long. Here it is, Mr. Vance. Welcome to Radium City. Grogan, put that baggage in number 10. Yes, sir. Come on, I'll show you where you sleep. Coming, Father? No, I'll see you later. What do you think, Father? It's too early to say, Grogan. But the lad has a fine name. He has, Michael Vance. You know, there was a lot of them in County Mayo. You take my grandmother, on me mother's side, that is. She had a nephew. Later, Grogan. Do you mind? Well, maybe it was a cousin. I'll never forget one morning. It was so cold and we were having a lot of trouble with the pig. So well fixed. Radio, electric lights. Yes, we have a small generator back there. You see, the days get kind of long up here when we get snowed in. But I hope to be out of here before that happens. Yeah. So do I. And there's no way oh, to treat these plants. The day's coming when we won't have to stand for this. We'll be getting better pay and shorter working hours. All right, men, break it up. What's the matter? Ain't we got a right to protest bad working conditions? Sure you have, but not now. Come on, get to work. If you have any complaints to make, see me in my office. Well, what was all that about? Oh, there's a lot of dissatisfaction up here, Mr. Vance. The whole thing is rather a hopeless job. But I don't want to bother you about that on your first day. How about looking the mine over? Well, um, <laughs> I've got the mining clothes on. Well, to tell you the truth, I got a brand new four and a quarter ounce rod that I'd like to try out. You got any fish around here? Fish? Have we got fish? Mr. Vance, you have to get behind a tree to bait your hook.
finally found the one I got to get behind. Well, Smokey, I don't know whether it's your fault or mine, but we didn't even get a bite. Look at this silly thing. Not even wet. Well, you've got to admit, Smokey, fish or no fish, this is mighty pretty country. Look at those hills. Hmm. I bet I could bounce a head tone over those. La -da -da. What do you know, an echo? La -la -la. La -la -la. What'd I tell you, an echo? Go on, Smoke, you try it. Go on, boy. Hey, wait a minute, that's no echo. Hey, study, fella. Don't go getting yourself involved. <coughs> Not a boy. Now you keep out of this, do you understand? Something tells me I better do the howling for both of us. La da da! La da da. La da da. I listen to the song of the waterfall, of the wind and all that grows. It's the same enthralling song since the world began, that only nature can come My father works at the mine. Oh, your father works at the mine. Well, you, um, a little bit on the, um, side, aren't you? My mother was Indian. Oh, well, quite a country guy. Mm -hmm. Holy mackerel. No, oh, that's dropped. Yes, I know. Did you catch him? Yes. How? With this. Mm -hmm. 
Wait a minute. You caught all those fish with this little piece of a bent pin, a string, and a stick? Yes, Indian fishing tackle. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Pardon me, will you? Too much. Here I came out here to catch a few fish this morning. I bring all the latest fishing tackle, a frying pan, and flour. And I don't even get a bite. And here you are with a little bit of a pin, a string, and a, a stick, and you get a boatload of fish. Why, there ought to be a law. There is a law. An Indian law. The fishermen must share their catch. So if you lend the frying pan and flour, I'll lend the fish. You mean here, now? Yes. We'll need a fire. Well, you're looking at the greatest fireman on Fifth Avenue. Watch the smoke. Where you been? Washing the dishes? Yes. Now, today I'm filled with peace and contentment. All of nature's my friend. Hmm. I'm poetic. You're full of fish. You won't hold it against me, will you? I hope not. You hope not? You've seen the famous smile, the charm of personality, you've heard the frequent witty remarks. I have heard and seen the rich man's son who we're told to expect. Oh. Then you know me. I followed you, Michael Vince, to see what kind of a man you are. Well, I could have told you that. I'm a prince of good fellows. I'm a lovable character. That's what I'm afraid of. Hey, Smokey, come here. Smokey, here, boy. There's nothing you can do about it, Michael Vince. It's the call of the North Country. The wolf called. Each hears it in his own way. I'm beginning to see what you mean. Oh, 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 oh,
Get him to talk business. Every time I look for him, he's with Tawana. Say so he hasn't been talking to McTavish, has he, Bull? Huh? I say he hasn't been talking to McTavish. No. Well, maybe not. But he shouldn't be hanging around. My orders were to get him out of here. Well, he wants to get out, doesn't he? Did when he got here. Well, then why not put the convincer on him? Yeah. How about that, Bull? I don't get it. How about proving to young Vance that this is no place for his lily white body? He's inspecting the mine this afternoon. I'll arrange not to be with him. How about putting on a little show for the boy? Yeah, sort of carry on for Radium Products Incorporated. Who are they? Well, they're just the bold bad trust we're working for. But don't you try to figure that out. They just pay us our money. Come on, let's get organized. That settles it. Men dropping like flies. It's a human. Are we going to stand for it? Come on, my friend. Don't touch him. He's not your friend, neither am I. Honest workmen will never be friends with the likes of you. What's the matter with the likes of me? You're grinding us down. Grinding the life's blood out of us. You know, it seems to me I heard you say something like that the day I arrived. And I'll keep on saying until the working man's fight is won. Oh. See? Now look, you couldn't possibly win this fight without pushing me around, could you? Oh, I'm not fit to touch you, huh? How do you like that? So you want to play, huh? Well, well, well. you men. Get back to work. Put your arm around me. Lean on old Grogan. Oh, what's the matter? I forget the duck. Come on now, Michael. Lie down till I see that the bull hurts your back. My back's all right, Grogan. Thank you, Father. Now, that's a fine left hand you have, Michael Vance. I used to think so, Father. And you brought up that right hook in fine fashion, too. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I read the right books. Mm, something like that. You know, you fight according to the rules. With men like Bull, everything goes. Yeah, I found that out. When he had you bent back over that rock, I was pleading with you to give him the heel on the instep. Yeah, you can cripple a man like that, Grogan. Cripple him? And what do you think he was doing when he was pounding your head on that boulder? Oh, so that's how this happened. Ah, uh, but I wouldn't feel too badly about it, sir. You're not knowing the rules and all. <laughs> Sure, I remember Shan the soccer, him that was champion of County Mayo. Sure, the champion lost his, his, his first 13 fights. Well, Grogan, that's very encouraging, and I thank you, believe me. 
Oh, it's all right, sir, but if you'd like to be learning a few of them tricks, like the heel on the instep... Or... Now, run along, Grogan. You talk too much. All right, sir. Oh, Grogan. Yes, sir? Uh, thanks. <laughs> it's all right, sir. I remember one time in Ireland, I hit a man so hard that he was suspended in the air for two minutes. Grogan. Well, a minute anyway. Quite a fellow. Yes, a man of few words. Yeah, let's see that. Well, you got a good night's sleep. You'll be as fit as a fiddle in the morning. I did a lot of tune, Father, but a fiddle. Come in. Come in. Oh, it's you. Well. Looks like we both tried to take in a little bit too much territory. Say, Father, does Bull Nelson own a dog? Now listen. I've just got a report on the McTavish process, and it looks pretty good. Which means we've got to own Radium City to protect ourselves. Right. Well, I'll let you know what happens. So long. Sorry about Bull, Mr. Vance, but that should only impress on you the seriousness of the whole situation up here. This mine cannot be worked at a profit. Why, it would take a half a million dollars worth of new equipment to really develop this property. And even then, we have no assurance of a reasonable return. Well, then you think we should close the mine? Mm, definitely. How long would that take? Just a few days. Well, I don't see any reason why we should continue pouring money down an empty hole. Besides, I'll make you to get home. Fine. I'll inventory the equipment on hand. You drop into the office later, there'll be some papers for you to... All right. I'll check with my father, though. I know he'll feel the same as I do. I'll see you there. Right. I'll get everything ready. Well, what do you think? And you. Well, boys, that makes it unanimous. lunch. Didn't see you in the commissary for breakfast this morning, and I thought you might be too busy to come for lunch. Well, I wasn't hungry this morning. In fact, I'm not hungry right now. Didn't Father Devlin stay with you? No, he went down to help an Eskimo with a broken leg. Here, have some coffee. Well, thank you. <laughs> Good? <laughs> yes, thanks. No fishing today? No, I'm too busy. I'm closing the mine. I'm going to fire everybody, and I'm going home. Yeah. You're going to run away, Michael Vince. Just because... That's the doctor. I asked him to come and see you. What do I want with a doctor? Just because I had a little fight yesterday? Shh, he's not that kind of a doctor. He's a chemist. Oh. <clears throat> come here, doctor. Dr. 
Doctor, this is Michael Vince. Yes, I know. Good morning, Vance. Hello, Doctor. You don't look so bad. No, but you should see my pride. I stayed up all night with it. <laughs> I'd no worry about that. Pride has amazing recuperative powers. I don't know exactly just how to commence this, Vance, but it's about the mine and the conditions at Radium City. Well, sit down, Doctor, and tell me about it. Thank you. As I understand it, uh, it is impossible to ship radium concentrate with profit, owing to the small yield of radium and the great bulk of concentrate. I believe there's one gram of radium to every ton of concentrate. Is that right? That's right. But if instead of shipping the tons of pitch blend, we could ship the pure radium. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that involve a, a complicated process? 35 processes, to be exact. Doctor, you suggest doing that here? Why, it would take a million dollars worth of equipment. I suggest doing it here, but not in 35 processes. In seven. And not with a million dollars worth of equipment, but with 50,000. You no doubt think this is a, a trick to keep the mine open, do you not? Well, I must admit you can expect to find me a bit skeptical. After all, why haven't you told me about this before? This is the first chance I've had. I was not supposed to talk to you. Bull Nelson's been my constant companion. And this morning, he's celebrating his victory. Hmm. Would you come over to the laboratory with me? Well, if you think it's worthwhile. I'm sure that I can convince you. Come along. All right. Lead is the only thing it will not penetrate. Consequently, this box is lead. My process is not infallible. Put down your glasses. But there's a bit of radium concentrate produced four times. Of course, the, the radium is so small, I cannot extract the pure element. A little more time, Mr. Vance, and we give the world a great discovery. Oh, Michael, I see you're getting interested in radium. Hi, Father. Hello there. Yes, Dr. McTavish claims to have a process that will enable us to ship Grams of radium instead of tons of concentrate. Mm, that wouldn't do much to the radium market, would it? Radium sells for $75,000 a gram. The announcement of this process would reduce the price to 15000 And make it available to everybody. Did you tell Carson about this? Two months ago. But he told me to forget it. But you didn't? No. My experiments since then have convinced me more than ever. Hmm. What if somebody's trying to put something over? Did you know about it, Father? Yes. I see. Then, then the doctor's visit to my cottage this morning wasn't just an accident. Well, we thought you might be leaving us. We? Tawana is in on it, too. Tawana? My daughter. Well, well, things are clearing up. That's what my grandmother said. Rogan. You see, most of the radium output of the world is controlled by a syndicate, Radium Products Incorporated. And this is the only important mine not in their hands. So if they can make the mine appear worthless, that'll force the old man to sell. I see. And you want me to keep the mine open until Dr. McTavish completes his experiment, is that right? Something like that. Believe me, we're not interested in the big business end of it. Thousands of sufferers the world over denied the healing relief of radium due to its exorbitant price. A price dictated by a group of men not concerned with humanitarian considerations. Well, put that way, I guess there's not much else I can do. But I was just thinking, I'm going to get awful tired picking myself up every time I see Bull Nelson. Yes, Bull. Well, Grogan here can show you a few of the tricks. And as for the scientific end of it... Meet Sean the Soccer. Ex-Sergeant Devlin of the Dublin Fusiliers. And Corporal Grogan of the same outfit. Well, gentlemen... I guess I'm elected. Pardon me, will you? I know all about that process the doc is dreaming up. Every ready man in the world has a process. They like systems to beat the races. Everybody has a system, but nobody ever wins. 
I think you're making a mistake, Vance. Maybe so, but that's the way it is. But of course, if you prefer to resign, why... No, 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 no. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm here to support you in anything you want to do. Oh, only you think I made a mistake, huh? Yes, I do. Well, I thought you were a little hasty with that closing notice. So that makes us even. But you said... I said I was going to check with my father, and that's what I'm going to do. Until then, I expect you to keep things going around here. Good day, gentlemen. Little boy grew some horns, huh? And so I decided to keep the mine open. I think McTavish should be allowed to continue his experiments, and I believe there is more than an even chance of them being a success. I don't have to tell you what that would mean, not only to us, but to the world. Check with Winton. Carson must have made some kind of a report on this. Well, of course. Carson sent me a copy of the formula for the process. I've had it examined by the finest chemical brains in this country, and they've just scoffed at it. But Michael says that he has seen radium being extracted by that process. No, we've just got to be reasonable, Mr. Vance. What does Michael know about radium? He's been fooled by smart people who want to spend the winter at your expense. Now, I've got a little surprise for you. Here is an offer of half a million dollars from Radium Products Incorporated for Radium City as it stands. If it's worth a half a million to them, it's worth twice that much to me. Has it been during the past ten years? Haven't you just thrown money into this project? Want to break their backs too? No. They won't attempt to work the mine. They just want title to it so that eventually when a more economical process is developed, they can cash in. But can you wait one, two, three, five, ten years? You know darn well I can't. Then as your financial advisor and the manager of your properties, I strongly urge you to accept this offer. It's a temptation. But I sent Michael up there to make a man of him. This is the first thing he's ever been excited about, outside of polo ponies and raising the devil. I'd hate to sell out from under him, even for a half a million dollars. It isn't just a half a million. Are you prepared to sink, say, another million dollars in new equipment? And as for Michael now, I didn't want to tell you this. But Carson says he's keeping the mine open just as an excuse for running around with a native girl. Put yourself into the bluebirds, let your voice go winging above, swing along in rhythm, wear your heart outside of your glove, nothing's wrong as long as you swing along and sing a song. Carson says you got a wire from me. Oh, 
Oh, yes, Mr. Vance. I picked it up down in San Pierre. Thank you, pal. Bad news? Oh, no, no. It's a happy birthday from the old man. I'll never forget the birthday party in Ireland one time. Oh, it was terrific. There must have been a thousand of us there. Logan? Well, there were 20 of us anyway. Uh, but you years, never had the bagpipes. Now a birthday party in Scotland. You never seen such. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, my Happy birthday, Happy birthday. 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 Is something wrong? Yes, my father's selling the mine. But he can't do that, Michael. The process. It's a success. What? We've got the radium. Where? In the laboratory. Can I see it? Come with me. We come into the laboratory just as the experiment has reached its climax. You've never seen such a sight. The whole room is as bright as day from the radium rays. Well, where is it? In this lead box. Enough energy to light the world. And enough radium to convince my father. Grogan, wall up the plane. Tonight? Yeah. I'm going to lay that stuff right in the old man's lap. It's practically there. Well, Doctor, allow me to congratulate you. By tomorrow night, you'll be a famous man. Thank you, Michael. But your father's selling Radium City. Can you get to him in time? Can I? No, you can't. I can't what? You can't get word out of here for another 24 hours. Oh, so that's it, eh? What does he mean? He means precisely, Doctor, that he's out on our side. That's right. You catch on fast. Your father's selling the mine tomorrow. After that, you can spread the joyous tidings to your heart's content. Well, well, well. Isn't that nice? Get the radium, Tom. Wait a minute. There's enough explosive in this vial to kill us all. You touch this radium, and I'll blow the whole laboratory to kingdom come. I'll take that gun, mister. Sucker? Okay, lad. Am I too late? Yeah. All right. Yes, Michael. Good luck. Come on. Let me go with you, champ. You stay with Father Devlin. All right. We'll be at the radio in Carson's office. Keep talking. Michael Vance to Radium City. Radium City to Michael Vance. Go ahead, champ. My instruments are gone haywire. Of course. The radium. He's, he's flying blind. Get down low, champ, and let us know where you are. We'll try to guide you from here. I'm over a lake. Heavily timbered on a 
shoreline. Moose Lake. You're off your course, Michael. They're to the right. Watch out for Squawtooth. Hold your hats. Here it is. Keep punching, champ! Get the mounted police station, San Pierre. The sergeant will put me through to New York. Michael's father's bound to believe me. Radium City to San Pierre. Radium City to San Pierre. Radium City to San Pierre. Are you proud of yourself, Carson? No, not particularly so, father. Just doing a job. You and I happen to be on opposite sides of the fence. But someday we'll all be lined up together and ask the same question. And then, for the good of your mortal soul, I hope you talk fast. Come, Grogan, we'll find the lead. Dad's alive. Grogan. The fire. Go on to get the blankets. Well, Father, what's the damage? Well, you can forget about the bruise in your head, but you do have a couple of broken ribs. Yeah, uh, what about the... What about the legs? Oh, it's pretty badly bruised, but nothing really to worry about. You know, Michael, judging from all appearances, you owe your life to that dog. Yeah. 
Nice going, fella. I didn't want to raise any false hopes in the lad, but the radio may work. It seems to be in one piece. Yeah, the battery's weak, but still alive. Look, string that antenna wire to a tree and be sure it's off the ground. Yes, Father. Well, here's our cozy little group again. You had a narrow escape. Yeah, I know. What about the mine? You tried, Michael. You did your best. Here, have some more soup. Hey, that's the aerial wire. How about it, Father? Is the radio awake? We'll know in a few minutes. Are you ready, Corporal Drugan? Ready, Sergeant Devlin. And here we go. Father Devlin, calling Mounted Police Station, Saint Pierre. Father Devlin to Mounted Police Station, Saint Pierre. Father Devlin to Mounted Police Station, Saint Pierre. Mounted Police Station, Saint Pierre to Father Devlin. Go ahead, Father. Got him. How about it, Father? Hello, Sergeant. This is important. I want you to get me through to Michael Vance, Sr., New York. If he's not at home, you'll find him at the office of J.L. Winton, attorney. A good job, Winton. Radium products won't forget you on this. Thank you. It's always a pleasure to do business with gentlemen of your character. Mr. Vance is here. We'll show him in. Hello, Mike. Well, hello, Martin. Come on right in. You know these gentlemen, don't you? Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Well, let's get this over with. Sit right down here, Mike. Papers are all ready for your signature. And here is a certified check from Radium Products for half a million. You squeeze us on this one, Vance. Worth every nickel. And what is this, a post office? Oh, I'm sorry, Mike. Here, here. Try this one. Hello? There's a long-distance phone call from Mr. Vance. He's very busy. Then let me talk to him. Put that call through. Mr. Vance, this is the sergeant in charge of the mounted police station at St. Pierre, Northern Canada. Father Devlin wants to talk to you. It's a priest up in Canada. Go ahead, Father. Mr. Vance? This is Father Devlin speaking to you from a wreck lane a few miles outside of St. Pierre. The plane crashed last night with your son. How is the boy? I know you will believe me when I say Michael was on his way to you with a gram of radium isolated by Dr. McTavish at Radium City. A gram of radium? And I was just about to sell the mine. I urge you not to sign anything until you talk to Michael. All right, Father. I won't. Uh-oh. There goes the battery. Hello. Hello. Well, that will bring the old man up here, maybe. <laughs> maybe you're right, Grogan. Now, what happened to that call? Say, where are you going? Say, Pierre. But what about these papers? Vance, I'm Father Devlin. Well, how do you do, Father Devlin? Father, this is Miss Morton. How do you A do? friend of Michael's. How are you? How do you do, Father? Father, where is he? Oh, he's in the cabin. Well taken care of? Oh, yes, he's in very good hands. Right this way, Mr. Vance.
This is a little awkward, but thanks for everything. As soon as he's able to be moved, we're taking him back home. I, I'm sure you understand. Of course. These clothes are going to look a bit silly in New York. <laughs> but don't you worry about clothes. You'll have a brand new wardrobe when we get there. And we're going to give you the finest laboratory equipment in the world. We're going to make Radium City a metropolis. Aren't we, Michael? Yes, Dad, sure. Sure. Well, I guess we're all ready. Come on. Did you find him? Yes, he's getting ready for a trip down river. Well, uh, isn't she going to tell her father goodbye? Oh, no, she told him goodbye at the cabin. She gave me this note to give to you. Goodbye, Michael. Goodbye? Yes. Goodbye and good luck. Good luck, my 